Ilana, how are you? I'm wonderful, ça va? Oui, ça va très bien. You speak French, maybe? No. So only in English? A little bit, a yes, little only bit. in English. Okay, please. so Lana, I know that your mother, Dolores Diazara, is an artist painter. Uh, as an artist painter chooses the colors to apply on a canvas, how do you choose the color to give to your characters? That's a really good question. Um, I look at them as, actually, sometimes I actually use colors like actual colors when I create characters. Um, but I also think of it as like um, layers of character. So as if like on a painting, how you would use different layers of colors to bring out more texture and depth. I do the same thing when I build characters, making choices that, um, you know, sort of really help shape a character because it's almost like you're creating a human being and there's so many layers and complexities to each human being. So it's very similar to painting, of actually. Course. Yeah. I know too that you never imagined that you could play an evil queen one day. So how did you build this wicked character in the series Once Upon a Time? Well, it's interesting because I, You're absolutely right. I never thought I would play an, an iconic fictional character like the Evil Queen. I, I was always really drawn to more um, like realistic characters, like real drama, you know, those kinds of stories. Although I love history and I love his, historical films as well. But again, those are based in real characters. So this was the first time I'd ever done anything that was fantasy. And um, when I first got this part, I always looked at her as a real person. And then the more I, I told her story and the more I connected with Disney, because prior to Once Upon a Time, I liked Disney, but I wasn't watching all of Disney films. And I was really into other kinds of movies. But when I started watching, um, you know, more Disney films and really understanding this character, I realized that I was playing like, wow, this is the first villain that Walt ever created. And all, I, all of a sudden I felt extremely honored. And, um, and I felt really lucky and fortunate to be able to play her. Wonder Woman actress Gal Gadot has announced that she will be playing the iconic evil queen in the next Disney movie. So what advices would you give her? <laughs> I would tell her to find the humanity in the character and have fun. Fun I is think important. It, yes, having fun is really important. <laughs> In 2020, you joined the cast of Why Women Kill, season mm -hmm. two. You play a woman married to a wealthy octogenarian waiting for his death to <laughs> inherit his fortune. How did you build such a venal character like this? It was new to... Yes, well, I think a lot of it had to do with the time. So it was set in the 40s. And if you think about women back in the 20s and 30s, There weren't a lot of options for them for careers. And um, my character had a very complex back, back story. And she didn't really come from much. But one thing she had was uh, her beauty. And she really used that to her advantage. And I think a lot of women did at that time. Well, people still do today. But I think really at that time it was much more prevalent and it was an easier sort of thing to use your sexuality, your looks to really open doors. And um, with Rita Castillo, <laughs> she's such a piece of work. <laughs> she, um, she was a, in a, a woman who sort of was desperate and she was a victim in many situations in her life. And she didn't really, uh, at least in the beginning of like her life, she didn't really have a lot of opportunities. So meeting Carlos uh, Castillo was like, a, you know, for her, that was like a ticket to a better life. So she moved into that direction. However, she was under the impression that he wasn't going to live very long. <laughs> And she was hoping to inherit everything, uh, or at least a portion of it. 
um, just so she can set up her life and her future for herself. But as, as the show goes, you know, things took a turn. And where did you draw your inspiration to try to understand how betrayals can lead women in the series to kill? Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe in my dreams. <laughs> I mean, we in all have nightmares. <laughs> Nor dreams. <laughs> But yes, nightmares and dreams. Um, I think a lot of people sort of feel that um, need and or desire rather for vengeance, you know, and um, I think that I personally would never act upon it. I'm too good of a human being. But um, I think really for Rita specifically, the reason why she ended up in, you know, really in the position that she was in, it was less that she wanted to kill because she ultimately doesn't kill anybody. Um, but she felt trapped and she felt like she was in a very abusive marriage. And I think when you're in an abusive marriage, you fantasize about things that you shouldn't do. And, and I think it's not just women, but I think people can be pushed into, you know, making very poor decisions when they are badly wounded and hurt by others. Season two addresses the theme of beauty, so what it means to be beautiful, the pains hidden behind the facade, the consequences of being not considerate maybe by our society. So have you ever been faced yourself with such emotions during your career? I, I, yes, I think like jealousy, possibly. Um, I've definitely been faced with jealousy. Mm -hmm. um, I've been faced with bullying. I've been faced with betrayal, all the above. So, um, yes, I think it's a very common thing in Hollywood, too. There's a lot of backstabbers, <laughs> but there's also a lot of really good people. And I think you have to just sort of see them when they're coming. And sometimes they, you don't see them so easily. Sometimes you end up working with people and you're like, oh, this doesn't, we're not a, a good mix. But You know, you have to sort of rise above it and focus on your work and do the best job that you possibly can. And, you know, pray that the next experience in your career, because there will be another experience, is better than the previous one. And as an actress, have you ever felt like you always had to be beautiful or maybe always perfect in this industry? Not at all. Actually, um, I just had this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday. And if you think about a lot of the successful actors, not every single one of them is very beautiful. They're talented. And I think your talent and your craft is really what is going to sustain. I think your beauty is only external and, and it can, it's temporary because we all get old. <laughs> People get bigger and, or smaller or they lose their hair. They get wrinkles and, and so, but even all that is beautiful. I think really what it is is a person. It's a person deep down inside. That's always, I always just say if you lined up anyone I've ever dated, no, there's no particular type. They all look so different. But I've always fallen in love with a person. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that in this industry, a lot of beauty does open doors. And, and you see people on screen that you're like captivated by, but they can't really, you know, their, their other talent of like performing just maybe isn't quite there. But you sometimes forgive it because you're like, well, they're so beautiful to look at. But I wonder where they're going to be 15 years from now. Are they still going to be working? So I always advise people, even that are beautiful or not beautiful, whatever beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but you know, people that we, the society, I, I guess, deems as pretty or beautiful, I always advise them to just don't rely on your looks because <laughs> that's fleeting. You really have to work on your craft because that will sustain. Thank you, Lana, Aww. for this interview. Thank you so much. My pleasure. It was lovely to meet See you. See you soon. Very Welcome good Welcome in questions. France. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We can have a look on your social networks. Your Instagram account is Lana Paria and your Twitter account is Lana Paria. Thank you so much. And was it un placer? No, that's in Spanish. Un yes, un plaisir.
Un plaisir. Un plaisir. Perfect. Un plaisir. C'est parfait. Merci. Merci, Merci à vous. Merci à vous pour votre fidélité. J'espère que vous allez passer un agréable moment en notre compagnie. On se retrouve très prochainement avec une nouvelle personnalité. D'ici là, prenez soin de vous.